Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I know it's been a little while for us, but we both finally found time to get out here and uh, do this podcast. And obviously, a lot to talk about with our Philadelphia Flyers. But first, Joe, of course, how are you doing today? Uh, doing well, doing well, especially when there's a three-game winning streak instead of a ten-game losing streak. That 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 help that helps things uh, along, especially in the holiday season. Um, so. Yeah, doing much better now, um, and we'll get into it, but I think uh, the team definitely looks much better thus far in the Mike Yo era minus one game uh, for the most part. Even the other game we lost, we at least had the offense going against the Avalanche. So it's definitely stuff is moving in the in the right direction, and uh, it's nice to see for sure. Absolutely. Let's just jump on that to talk about the new era. So why don't, we, why don't you talk about that first? Did you agree with the coaching change, and what do you think about the interim is it going to stay for a while, or do you think it's just a short time kind of leash to get through the season? Um, yeah, just talk about the coaching change here with the Flyers first. Uh, I'll start with the how long I think it's going to last, because that's a lot quicker to go over. I feel like it's something that might end up being. At first, I thought it would be we would try to go out and get somebody just because you have Claude Julians on the market who had to leave the Canadians, mostly just because of his health and not because of any coaching reasons whatsoever. Um I don't really want John Tortorella, but John Tortorella's out there. Uh, you have Rick Tockett. So there's, like, different coaches that are out there that are available. So I thought it would be quicker. But then as soon as Fletcher had the press conference, I was like, oh, no, this might actually be Scott Gordon all over again, where you just let the season play out and then see how it does. The only difference is Yo has had more – like, Scott Gordon's one of the all-time winningest coaches in the AHL. But in the NHL, he's been very inconsistent. Where, where Yo has actually had a good stretch in only his 30s, in like his third age 30s with the Wild, and then still was pretty young because he's only 48 now. I'm um, in his tenure with the Blues. Um, so I think he's a pretty good guy. He's a guy that you can tell um, has only been able to implement a little bit. But the thing I've noticed the most. Um, now getting into saying, like I said, I think will be extended in terms of if it's the right decision. I think it was because we the, the dump and chase and all this and the things that we've been doing with AV, one, the team that we have doesn't work with a dump and chase system. And that was very obvious. Apparently, it wasn't obvious to Michelle Terrian and, and um, Elaine Vigneault. And two, it's just not working unless if you're like the avalanche and can do it, but you don't do it all the time. It doesn't work all the time. Like, the only time that ever worked all the time was in older hockey, which, like, even you could say maybe set like a few years ago. But nowadays, with the way everything – I talked about it on the Ducks podcast that I am that I did with Delhi when we talked about the Ducks. Everything's on pace and speed in today's game. There's not as much, oh, hit the guy at the boards on the dump and chase and you're going to get the puck back because whoever's fast is just going to beat you and he's going to get away from the – hit like guys like Trevor Zegras to avoid the hits like the best of them. They're not the biggest guys, but they avoid hits with the best of them. So that system I think just doesn't work anymore. But the biggest thing is anybody that like <clears throat> I listened to that has a lot more insight. They talked about how he lost the locker room and the locker room just what well, at that point, AV couldn't figure it out. And the locker room wasn't really listening to him. And when that happens, uh, you have to move on from him. Now, now all that being said, this dude's an accomplished coach in the NHL. If he gets another role, I wish him all the best. It's just everybody gets stale. I'm um, in their time here. I loved him as somebody that got to cover a couple games from Nitty Gritty. He was one of the best guys in the media would crack jokes about martinis and like always say to have a nice night to everybody, which some, ju- uh, some coaches are not that uh, outgoingly nice, uh, where uh, it, it, it was nice to see that. So, but yo, I have liked what he said this for, and I have liked the way the team's adjusted this for. For example, we've got through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone significantly better with yo because we're controlling the puck into the offensive zone rather than going, let's dump it and have one guy that for some reason tends to be the smallest guy on the ice half of the time go in and then everybody else stays back. So, like, it, that didn't make sense. Now you're seeing the offense transpire. The only game under the Yo era we didn't have any offense was obviously the first game against the Devils, and then we came out and smacked the Devils uh, last night in the second game at home. So of the Yo era, not the second game in general, because we, of course, lost to them with AV uh, in New Jersey. But um, I think 
if we're, we're building in the right direction, we have another easy team tomorrow that we have to beat. And then Saturday, we have another team that we should beat. Now, they're not an easy team, even though they're not have that many wins, the Ottawa Senators, because they have a lot of young talent like the Bathersons, Stutzlas, and Norrises. But um, you should be able to beat the Canadians. They only have six wins. You took advantage of the Coyotes. The Canadians are a team you have to you have to take advantage of the Sens, but they're not the same as the Coyotes and Canadians in my eyes. They're a little bit more of a competitive bad team. So Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned it, you talk about losing the locker room, you talk about the difference, um, kind of with the new coach and Mike and everything stepping in. I guess my big thing is I think you could tell how much he lost the locker room. Like you could tell in the difference, just the the way they're trying on the ice, and you can tell the energy's different, I feel like, in, in these few games under Mike. I feel like, I don't know if you agree, but the energy has been completely different. And obviously, when you're on a 10 game losing streak, sometimes you're going to have that, and you'll, you'll see that big difference. But I, mean, I guess you agree with the energy thing, and, and I think already the power play. I mean, I know that's kind of been, everyone says it's been one of his specialties as a coach and everything. They brought in some other guys sitting on there as the assistants. But I mean, I, for me, I mean, this. This change, I originally, I, I was kind of skeptical on the change. I was like, I don't know how much difference it's going to be. AV is obviously a, a big name around the NHL, but, I mean, I, I can tell how much I've been wrong. I think it's been a huge difference. Yeah. Well, I think the bigger difference, too, is Daryl Williams, Michelle Terry, and I think was a coach that was in a position that made no sense in the first place. The guy, if you look at his teams that he's coached over his careers, his power play is going down every year, and he's not. A, he's more of a guy that you might not mind having as an assistant. But what the hell are you having them help run your offense and run your power play for? Like, like that was just an out of place thing in, in the first place. It was like Chris Young running the damn pitching staff for the Phillies. It made no sense in there. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it's it, not, not really that, please. <laughs> um, so, like, it, it, it just. It just didn't make sense where Daryl Williams, the way that AV's bacon could have been saved, like um, Jim Jackson likes to say on broadcast, is if they let Darrell Williams do the job he's doing now at the beginning of the season, because he is a better suited fit and we're seeing it already to run a power play and help run the offense. than obviously Michelle Terrian was. So uh, that that's something I think Terry and your talked about it on nitty gritty when I was on with him and multiple other times on the nitty gritty pocket. Uh, he's a guy that should have been let go a- a last off season. I was fine with keeping AV, but Terrian should have been let go, especially after you brought in Williams. It made zero sense then at that point to keep Michelle Terrian, but you still did for some reason. And then you reaped the uh, unbenefits, you reaped the negative stuff uh, from it this year, and now you see at least progress with Darrell Williams. And also, unfortunately, we have, it looks like Frost is going to be out due to COVID protocols tomorrow, so... Unfortunately for him, but fortunately for this kid, it looks like Cates might actually get some time after the last time he was up. He just got caught up to travel down to Arizona and Vegas for no reason just to fly back up to Lehigh to play in a hockey game. <laughs> so maybe he'll actually get to play get to play against uh, uh, against uh, Montreal in Montreal because according to Cap Friendly, he got the call up to replace um, Frost. Yeah, no, I agree with that, and I think. I don't know. For me, I, I think you've seen big adjustments from the defense. I mentioned the power play. Um, I, I think the coaching change helped Cam Atkinson. I think we've seen a lot better from him. But I think, I don't know. My question is, which area have you seen the biggest defense or biggest difference with the new coach? For me, it's the defense, I think. I think the defense is, has figured a lot of things out. I get it. Yeah, I think the power play is another close one. But I think the defense has been huge. I think you've been uh, taking care of the puck better in the back end. And saw that in the Devils game, obviously, you put up six goals. I think a lot of that was helped by the defense. Instead of giving up some goals and keeping your zone, you've turned that into all. No, I agree, and that's kind of exactly how Yo is, where Williams is more of the, I run like I can put people in places offensively. Yo's more of the, let me trap the neutral zone and push the defense to the offense. That's what he did with the Wild a bit, and he definitely, certainly did with St. Louis, and but Ruby just runs a more brute version of that, like in your face version kind of of that system um, where I think he's definitely the defense has improved in tenfold with him because that's what he's kind of his cup of coffee is. That's why he was one of one of our defensive coaches where the defense, even when it was struggling with AV, I agree with JJ on that Jim Jackson, where 
that just kind of spiraled where when we were even just struggling to score at first, the defense was doing fine. Then we, when we went on the losing streak, everything spiraled because then everything just goes. We saw it with the Phillies in recent years and the Flyers last year. Everything kind of just goes where now you're getting back to actually seeing the good defense and you're seeing it even better than it was early in the season because they're pushing it through the neutral zone and they're actually making the right passes rather than taking seven seconds, it seems, to make every decision. And then at that point, there's a guy jumping the pass and going the other direction. And then you have your your gas because your defenders are running all over the place. So I think um, it's happening well for this team. But I think the big thing I've noticed with Yo, too, is certain guys, not even just uh, Atkinson getting hot again after he went cold, but certain guys that were still figuring it out. Uh, this season getting hot with Yo. Like, for example, Willman's been great since Mike Yo's become the coach. Uh, he's got some third line minutes. Uh, the guy, uh, he's worked his behind off to come up from the ECHL, become an AHL star, and now a 26 be in the NHL. Uh, he, if he keeps playing like this, he basically has replaced the Abe Kubel spot in your lineup where he plays a much more disciplined, fast paced game where Knack played. I think the Flyers lulled him into doing that, putting him out of place a little bit, but uh, where he's playing better with the Avalanche. But Willman's in a good place for himself. Yo complimented him uh, after yesterday's game with how well he's playing. And then having Patty Brown back, all of that helps because Patrick Brown's nothing special, but he is a pretty good fourth line center that slots in more nicely than a Thompson, who's more of just a fill in player before he got injured at this point of his career because he just can't keep up with the pace of the game anymore at this point of his career. Uh, so I think everybody's working well. Um, you also are going to have Brass, of course, who uh, was skating, I think. He's only day-to-day, so Broussard's having a pretty good season. I think I think with the biggest improvement, though, has been what you said, the defense getting it up the ice and getting through the neutral zone is the, bi- is the biggest thing. Um, so you said defense, so I'll go with the neutral zone thing that I brought up earlier because the Flyers are one of the worst teams, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> in neutral zone play throughout most of the season, even when they were winning, they were kind of just getting it through and like forcing it through and then being able to get nice goals where like they were just getting the good puck lock basically where it was like it was finding twine Um, where then when they didn't get that, everything just hit the fan where now you're seeing a much more efficient system, drawing more offensive chances that you would call the eight plus chances because you're holding on to the puck. You're getting better possession numbers because you're driving it through the neutral zone. You're not getting swarmed or just dumping it in and losing possession. Um, so, w- which is also why I hated the dump and chase, because if I have possession of the puck and I'm a good player, what the hell am I dumping it into the zone for to then go chase it if I can just deke around you and then pass it to my other teammate so he can try to score a goal? But like, I, that's why I've never liked the dump and chase system, because if I could get around the defender and pass it to, say, like, Atkinson, that there's no sense in dumping it in and letting Cam chase it because he's going to get a better chance if I can get around the defender because he's going to be in a better scoring position. When If you dump it in and he has to chase it, you have to then try to get into a good scoring position while the defense has time to react as he's chasing the puck on the dump in. So I've never liked that type of system. But. Yeah, I feel like that's something we've done for a while. I guess that. Like oh, no, no, that's not just this year, but I've always hated, like, like even when it's worked, like, it's one of those things because when it doesn't work, it's so frustrating that, like, it, it's just not that great. of a, It's one of those systems um, when it works, great, but when it doesn't work, you, you have to change it, and some sometimes you're so into that mindset that Yo's got people out of that where he basically talked about it when it came in. It was about changing the mindset almost and the and the vibes of the team before it was changing structure because you just had to get out of your heads and just do, and that's kind of what they started doing in these last three games. No, I know I agree. I think well, here's, I guess here's here's been the hot question I've been seeing on Twitter and, and social media and everything is is the Flyers team back? Are we ready to believe? For me personally, I need to see more than just three game win streak. Three games is not a big sample size. Yeah especially against the one with one of them being the Coyotes and everything and the Devils who aren't even that good of a team either. I mean, obviously we're not an amazing team, but the Devils the are our Marlins though. So I feel like that yeah. is actually a <laughs> decent win since they are like the Flyers equivalent to the Marlins basically. No, you're not wrong. I think it's, it's, 
it's tough to say, but I need to see more than three games. I don't know about you. That, that's that's the question here because I've seen a lot of people say, "Oh, the Flyers are back." Start believing again. Well, I'm like, again, I need more than three. Games. <laughs> no, yeah, I, after I, ten straight. And, and real quick, I get it. What was it? Two years ago, I think we lost ten straight and still made the playoffs. I'm not saying we can't. And then the we won ten straight and missed the playoffs <laughs> in the season too. So like, like our team doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense when it comes to the way they do things. Um, but well, that feels, that feels hard to make sense. No, um, but no, I agree. I think you need, especially because, like I said, the next two games, you got to take advantage of the opponent. The next test game is next Tuesday against the Washington Capitals, where you play a very good Capitals team that even with people out this year is still 17, five and six. And they've been going through hell with the COVID protocol and with injuries. So um, you, you have Montreal. You have to beat Montreal. I don't care that it's in Montreal and it's in the palace of hockey. You still have to, with the way they're playing this year, beat Montreal. So, like, you have to go beat them. Then we're playing Ottawa for some reason at home. I don't understand the scheduling the NHL is doing this year. Um, on Saturday, after we have to travel to Quebec, when we couldn't just play Ottawa and Ottawa. But, you know, that's not my own. That's not my purview. Um, but the, we're playing Ottawa at home. you got to be able to win that. And then you have to be able to win the last, I believe it's the last home game. Yes, the last home game before... Or they go on the um, Western road trip after playing Pittsburgh on the 23rd on the road because then they have all that Disney on ice stuff in uh, the Wells Fargo Center over the holidays. Yeah, you can't forget about the Disney on ice stuff. Every year, every year it's, uh, it's, here, to, it's here to push us out. Because that's, that's the thing we always talk about. I always want to go to the game. Whenever I come home, it's over, it's over winter break and there's always a Disney on ice. So we never get to go to uh, a game. We, never we could go there. this year, though, because you're probably still home the 6th or the uh, 8th, right? Uh, January? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm leaving the 29th. Oh, you're going back that early. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have games the 30th and the 1st. Okay, yeah, because if you were on, like, a regular school Christmas break, we probably wouldn't have been able to work that out. But, um, no, to me, I think the teams just looked a lot more structured, even without – they barely had a practice yet because they had, for the Devils game, they had a shorter practice because uh, Yo said you have to have, like – or no, I think they did actually end up having a longer practice because the guys, like, they ended up agreeing to have a longer practice, which which is also a positive sign that everyone's buying into him, obviously, if they knew they had to play after travel and whatnot. Um, you had to play the Devils after coming back from um, having, uh, obviously, um, after coming back from playing on the West. So uh, I think that's a good sign moving in that direction as well, if they actually did buy in to do that. But now you don't even barely have a practice because you have to travel to Montreal. I did. I saw a tweet that they were having like a short, like it was like 12 to whatever, and then they were on a plane at two. So like yeah. you haven't had much to uh, do with Yo yet in terms of him implementing his own stuff. So that's why I think it's a very good sign. And that's why I also think people like you brought up earlier have got overhyped by the three because they we haven't even had him yet to be able to implement much of his system because he only had one practice and then it was a rust practice. And then you're not going to really have much. You, you have a travel into Quebec and then you have the uh, game tomorrow in Montreal, Quebec. So, I mean, you, you, you're you going to not have much before that other than a morning skate. So uh, I think it's been very promising what we've seen without him even being able to fully implement what he wants to do to this point. Um, and I've, I've thought because yo, from some of the stuff I've read over the time was he was more of a serious dude, like the defensive minded, like serious hockey guy, kind of like how Kirk McDonald or um, Royals coaches, but he cracks some stuff. He does have that vibe a little bit of being serious, but he's a lot more outgoing and like, like from the media stuff I've watched this for, he's a lot more outgoing and, sociable than I think articles have let on in the past or like people have let on in the past and in the hockey world about but unless if he's just grown and changed personality wise which could be the case as well but uh he seems like he's a little bit maybe AV rubbed off on him because he's one of the more outgoing coaches but like he seems like he is a lot more like he's made a couple like jokes and he kind of like has the like cool like the 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 cool like regular just how happy smile and not like the dead serious Tortorella hockey coach look, um or something like that twenty four seven. So I think he's a little bit more looser than people gave him um credit for being, which I think is a good thing to have mixed with structure. 
because this team was gripping their sticks way too tight. Well, that's why we saw you see Vancouver playing a lot better now because Bruce Boudreaux knows how to loosen up a locker room as well as put structure into that locker room, where it looks like Mike Yo has learned how to loosen up a locker room as well as put structure into that locker room, getting better at it, it looks like, and getting better um, in terms of uh, how he comes off out uh, of the media, which um, I think was overblown anyway, but um, in this next uh, room here in Philadelphia, where if he keeps doing well, he's a guy that has more tenure, like I said, than Scott Gordon. I wouldn't be surprised if he is our head coach, because he has the NHL track with being there for, I think it was four years about with the Wild, and then about two with the Blues. So like he has a more NHL track record, where the thing you have to do now is we don't have enough assistant coaches. You've been having like Nick Schultz come down from whatever advisory role he does with the team to be an assistant coach lappy filled in for a game who's the phantoms coach and then you have basically daryl and um mike having to do everything when normally you have help for more of a coaching body so you're not doing everything <laughs> in the entire uh week for game planning and everything uh so that's the thing that i think fletch has to focus on where he's talked about it when he had the press conference about getting rid of people. Um, I, th I think that's the thing he has to focus on um, going forward um, is getting him as assistant coach as he needs so it can help out the overall staff. If, if it is going to be keeping him to the regular season, which it seems like it's going to be keeping him to the end of the regular season, you must fill out the rest of the coaching staff. Yeah, no, no question. I, I guess to finish up, I don't know what else you have, but I – who would you be your players that need to improve to continue this turnaround? And who, yeah, I, I just stick with that. Who needs to improve? I think for me, offensively, I would want to see JVR kind of pick up his pace a little bit. Uh, I think you're expecting more from him. And then defensively, uh, Provero. That's, that's mine. I just think I think both of them can, can use the upgrade. And uh, JVR, minus nine uh, point differential when he's on the ice. Provero, minus two, especially as a defender. Um, being what he's expected to be, I'd like to see him kind of get back to what we've seen in the past. I feel like he's he's kind of had a down year uh, compared to what we've seen. No, Proby, yeah, Proby's definitely a great one because he has had a bad year compared to what we've seen. It was nice to see him get, I believe it was two assists in last night's win. Uh, so it was nice to see him join the Sanheim line and having a very good offensive night with Sanheim and Risto as well on the defense. But yeah, he has to get it going. Braun's been probably our best defense, not probably, Braun's been our best defenseman throughout the season. Um, and then uh, you, in terms of improving, you took JVR, who hopefully keeps doing what he's been doing of late, because the overall season, 10 points is in 27 and five goals is not enough. Uh, so if he can do what he's done the last two and get on a hot streak here, that will help us, obviously, in keeping our winning ways. Um, one for me definitely still is, even though he's looked better of late on the assist total. You pick someone that's looked better of late, too, but needs to keep it going is TK. TK needs to get his goals going now and um, get that confidence boost going, where he's had a couple of nice assists of late, like in the Colorado game and yesterday, um, to name a few. But uh, he just still needs to – he's a guy that you expect to get the puck and shoot it and score it a lot more than he's doing. He only has five goals. Uh, you expect him to score a lot more than – no offense to JVR. But I expect TK at this point of his career to score a hell of a lot more than JVR at the age of 32 going on 33. Uh, so, um, like, like I, I, TK needs to pick it up um, a little bit um, there as well. And I think he will because he's a guy that seems with Yo to be like you were talking about certain guys being bolted. He looks like one of those guys that has been bolted a little bit. Now he just needs to get off the snide with goals because he's doing really well with assists. Uh, in the last couple games, he just needs to get off the snide with goal. But in defense, since you took Prover off, mine has to be Yandel. Since the beginning of the season, Yandel looked fine at the beginning of the season, was running the power play fine. He's looked pretty bad of late for the lack of um, getting too deep into um, – ripping too deep into a guy I really like and love personality-wise. is one of the funniest and fun guys in the game, so I don't want to rip him too much. But uh, he hasn't been good. Uh, he needs to – get it going more because I don't want to see anybody have to come to the decision of, Oh my God, do we have to break one of the better streaks in the history of hockey? Like, do we actually have to break an iron man streak because of the way that someone like he needs to pick up his play. Otherwise that decision might eventually get talked about, which is not something I want to see for him 
or something I want to see for the Flyers organization because you're going to get bad PR if you end up actually ending Keith Yandel's eye. Like, look at Florida. I was one of the people yelling at Florida, too. I'm like, I swear to God, Florida, if you end Keith Yandel's Ironman streak, I might fly down to Florida to pimp slap you and then just fly back up here immediately. So, like, I, I don't want to see that happen, but he needs to improve it a bit. He's looked better on the power play the last couple of games as the power plays got going. But Yandel has not been, like, he's been bad 5-on-5 five five since he's entered his, like, age 32 onward season. He's been more of just a power play guy. But he's never been this off 5-on-5, five five, where he needs to at least get the offense and all that going a little bit more 5-on-5, five because five, we know he's going to struggle in the defensive zone. But he needs to be better pushing the puck up on offense in the 5-on-5 five five in order to be a better overall defenseman and play more like we saw Yandel play even when he did end up getting played by Florida last year. So, Absolutely. Um, final question. Let's preview the kind of the end of the year real quick. Obviously, hopefully we get another one in before the end of the year. But you already mentioned the next two, Montreal and Ottawa, two games you have to take advantage of, um, especially when you got Washington and Pittsburgh next. Then you got Seattle, another team you want to take advantage of. You're on the road, so it'll be tough, obviously. San Jose, about even, about what you are. So kind of a mixed feeling schedule there. Washington, Pittsburgh, San Jose, tough games there. But Montreal, Ottawa, and Seattle, three teams you need to take advantage of that at least go three and three minimum. Uh, here in the final six before the new year no yeah no i agree with that yeah you definitely have to try to get at least a three on three in there um i think you should be able to beat one of san jose or seattle where san jose is a very good team where um they've been very good this year because their structure has been with guys coming up and stepping up a lot better this year um, and healthy. Uh, carlson actually being healthy and playing more like eric carlson is a big boost um, so I think they also are James Reimer has been who's played for Reading actually for a period of time, the Reading Royals. Um, James Reimer has uh, been a absolute electric magnet in net this year and been ridiculous for the Sharks. Uh, so if he's in net, yeah, that that might be like a Mackenzie Blackwood. We finally saw Blackwood last night, but apparently he was sick. So. <laughs> So that would lead to reasons why we might have been able to finally. So, but I'll take it. Um, so uh, the, I think um, the Sharks are probably the toughest out of the Seattle and um, Sharks matchup. But we, we're going to win one of those two games. I feel like we have a chance with how if we play like how we've been playing of late, you can be um, particularly if there's still certain guys out of the lineup. I haven't been able to look at their injury report. But if there's still certain guys out of the lineup for Pitt, if we're playing like we have in the last three, you could also be able to beat Pitt, but it's also in Pitt. So that makes it a little bit tougher. But we also play pretty well at the PPG paints. Like I, ever since that stadium has been built, the Flyers usually play a pretty good game in Pittsburgh. So at least I think it's still called PPG paints. But good question. Not, not overly sure on that one. But I don't know about you, if you have any other final thoughts, but I think that's all I have. That's pretty much all I have. I mean, this team, it's nice to see us turn it around here and get the get off the snide, and we're starting to find twine um, with the goals here, where we have Faraby coming back. He was getting hot, uh, which is also a, a, a positive, because Faraby hasn't even been in. Oh, and we've been able to figure this out here when getting him back. He's one of the bigger components of the team. And Tanner Luzinski also, who probably would be our 4C right now if he was healthy, uh, was finally saw skating. Um, Charlie O'Connor tweeted that out earlier, and then Sam Wismer of Nitty Gritty tweeted me, or texted me to let me know about that um, with the practice. So, like, that that's a good thing to see. Um, I think this team's moving in the right direction. You just have to keep seeing you got to take advantage, like you said, of the schedule coming up, particularly with Montreal, with Seattle, and um, – with Ottawa there, but and then Washington and Pittsburgh or whatever you're able to have there as long with San Jose as well as San Jose. So I think this is a stretch run the Flyers are going to be able to take advantage of, but we still have to see it because three games, like you said, is not a stretch run that I can get behind yet when you lost 10 straight before that three game winning streak. So, absolutely. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you like what we're doing, please like and reach out to us and what else you want us to talk about. But thank you for joining us for another episode here with Joe and I.